I'm going to start out with learning about calculating DC total resistance of series circuits. Now this is a very basic DC fundamentals course. This is not a DC fundamentals course. You could teach an entire 10 week course on DC fundamentals. I really encourage you, you know, get familiar with that in your career. I'm just going to teach you some basic things on some questions that you may face on your examination. If you look at this circuit here, they're both the same picture. If you look at it, you have the a battery symbol there, and we're going to go with conventional flow, saying it flows from the positive through the resistors to the negative. Electron flow would be from the negative to the positive. But our example here shows it fl from the positive, going through the resistors, coming back you know, through the negative. We're going to learn how to calculate total resistance of DC circuits. We're also going to learn how to calculate voltage drop across the DC circuit. The total resistance of a series circuit is equal to the sum of the individual resistances. RT, which just means resistance total, is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3 and so on and so forth, however many resistors you have. We have a 12 volt battery in this case. We have three ohms on R1, three ohms on R2. So this is gonna give us an RT of six ohms. So RT is equal to the total of all the resistors. In this case, R1 is 9 ohms, R2 is 4 ohms, so RT is going to be 13 ohms. Now let's learn about voltage drop of series circuits. First, we must calculate what the amp draw is on the circuit. If we know the voltage in the resistance, how could we calculate the amperage? We learned in week 2, part 1, about Ohm's law. First, we must get the total resistance and then apply Ohm's law. So in this case, it is 9 plus 4. It's going to be 13 ohms. So what we do is we set up our formula so we remember, and we plug in the knowns. In this case, we know that it's a 12-volt circuit. We've got 13 ohms of resistance. All we must do now is to divide 13 up into 12, and that's going to give us our amperage. In this case, it's 0.923 amps. Second, we must use Ohm's law again to find the voltage drop across any given resistor voltage drop is going to be equal to R1 multiplied by I and voltage drop of a resistor 2 is going to be equal to that resistor multiplied by I. Because remember, we're just trying to find the voltage drop. So E equals IR. Just plug in the knowns. In this case, we know the I and we know the resistance and we're looking for the voltage drop. So we just multiply those two together. On this other side here, we just plug in the knowns and we know the amperage and the resistance and we just multiply that and that's going to give us the voltage drop. So the voltage drop of R1 is 8.3 when we did our multiplication and the voltage drop of R2 is 3.7. Okay, a quick recap. The voltage drop of R1 is 8.3. The voltage drop of R2 is 3.7. 8.3 plus 3.7 is going to equal 12 volts. The voltage will be equal to the sum of the voltage drop across all resistors, and that's how you double check your work. Now we're going to learn about calculating DC total resistance of parallel circuits. We're also going to learn about calculating voltage drop across an individual resistor in a parallel circuit. How many of you have already studied parallel RT questions in the past? The total resistance of a parallel circuit is expressed in this formula. R total is equal to the reciprocal of the reciprocal of R1 plus the reciprocal of R2 plus the reciprocal of R3 and so on and so forth. To get the reciprocal of a number, you will just divide that number up into one. What we're going to do is first get the reciprocal of each resistor, then take the reciprocal of that number, and that is going to give us the resistance total. This is another way to look at the formula. The reciprocal of R total equals the reciprocal of each one of those numbers. So that's another way to look at it. Okay, so we have 6, 3, and 9 as our resistors. So what is the total resistance of this parallel circuit? I want to note out right away that we have four options here in our question. The answer is always going to be smaller than the smallest resistor in the circuit. So if you're in your testing center and you get a question like this, we can tell right away that A and B are not going to be correct because the total resistance of a parallel circuit is going to end up being smaller 
than the smallest resistor. That's an easy way to figure that out. So now if you had to guess and you forgot the steps, you had a 50-50 shot, just select C or D. If you couldn't remember, and you got a 50-50 shot of getting the question right when you're in the test. Remember, always mark an answer on your test as correct. Even if you're just taking a total guess, you can mark it to come back later, but always put an answer because if you run out of time, you got a one in four shot of getting it right. Take our one divided by six plus one divided by three plus one divided by nine. Go ahead and do that on your calculator now. Pause the video if you need to. If you took the time and worked that out, it is going to give you 0 0.611111. But we cannot stop there. We must then take the reciprocal of that number. So we, we must then divide 1 by that number. So we take 1 and divide it by 0 0.611111. The question is, is how many of those ones do you put? What you do is go ahead and put the one divided by whatever the number is and then type it in as many times until you get an answer that's close to one of your um, choices in your question. So in this case, we keep typing it in until we get 1.63, 6, which is going to allow us to round up, and that's going to give us 1.64. I'll point this out that the testing center is not going to put them that close that if you did not round up or down, you're going to get the answer wrong. If you notice in our question, D is one whole number uh, larger than that, you're going to be okay there. So just type it in until you feel comfortable with one of the answers that's represented. And then we round it up and we selected C. Let's do another one. What is the total resistance of this parallel circuit? We look right away and we see that our smallest resistor is two. So we know right away that C and D are incorrect. It's gonna be either A or B. So let's move forward. So we take one divided by two plus one divided by eight plus one divided by 10. We cannot stop there. We must then divide one by that number. That is gonna give us one divided by 0.75. And that is going to give us 1.3793. We're just going to round up to 1.38. If you have chose to go with our testing center, we're going to have these questions on there. We also have detailed answers on how to work through the questions. 